Well, hello everyone, Stacy Murphy here with a quick video on what is eating my garden greens. And this is a topic that comes up a lot for new growers especially because here's the deal. Whenever you plant food, things come to eat it. And oftentimes we want to be the ones who eat it, but sometimes there are other things that come to eat whenever we plant that food, right? So I wanted to shoot this quick video so that you could avoid some of the most common pests that show up when you plant garden greens. And this video is gonna be specifically about garden greens. I'm gonna talk about five different things that might be eating your garden greens and how to tell which one that you have, all right? Okay, so uh, here's some interesting greens, haha, <laughs> from my garden. The thing that is putting a hole in this green, at the top of this green, is different than the thing that chewed these completely off, all right? So there are two different types of things that can be uh, chewing on your garden greens. It might be some sort of insect that's putting a hole in your green, or it might be a mammal that comes along and just bites the whole thing off. All right, so let's talk about these two things. Let's talk about insects first. So one of the insects that might be eating your greens are flea beetles, and they love tender young greens. Uh, when your greens get larger, things like kale and collards, when they get bigger, it's probably not a flea beetle. But if the plants are small and if the leaves are soft, flea beetles love them. And flea beetles sometimes are hard to find because they jump like fleas. They're tiny. They're like this big. They're black. They look like beetles. You might see them, but oftentimes by the time you look, they're gone because they jump. And the way that you know that you have flea beetle damage is it looks like a shotgun of very small little holes all over your leaves, all right? Now, with flea beetles, um, we're not going to talk so much about how to prevent all of these things. This video is mostly about identification. But flea beetles, what you want to do is interrupt their life cycle. I talk a lot about that. Maybe I'll shoot a separate video about how to interrupt all these pest cycles. But one of the ways to interrupt beetle life cycles is to take and scuffle the top surface of the earth a little bit if you have a lot of flea beetles and you're interrupting them laying their eggs and hatching their larva in the soil, all right? So that's the first thing. Uh, flea beetles, they like soft, tender, young greens. They don't go after big, tall kale and collard plants, but they will go after them when they're small. Um, second thing that may be eating your garden greens are slugs. And slugs, they like to go after sort of the center part of your leaves, really, like the in-between the veins kind of spaces. And, um, and usually the telltale sign of a slug is that uh, there'll be streams of like um, iridescent kind of like sparkly goo on your greens. That's how you know it's a slug. The other way you might know it's a slug is if you put a trap out to trap the slugs. This is how you can interrupt the life cycle and get ahead of them. Put out a piece of sort of old wood, like some sort of old rotting board, and go out at like early morning, dawn, before the sun comes up, flip it over. If there's slugs on the underside, it might be slugs that are eating your garden greens. And you can remove them because the wood is a trap. Remove them in the early morning before they can do any damage later in your garden. All right? So flea beetles, slugs. Third thing that can be eating your garden greens are caterpillars. And there are lots of different types of caterpillars. There are cabbage loopers. There are cabbage worms. So um, there's lots of different types of caterpillars. And they all have a similar life cycle. So this green here is actually got uh, cabbage worms on it, all right? A cabbage moth butterfly is the white butterfly that flies around your garden and it lays these little tiny eggs. Can you see that little yellow dot right there? Look how tiny that little yellow dot is. That's pretty cool, right? So, um, I mean, it's cool, but it's not cool. <laughs> so those, there's four eggs on this uh, leaf for caterpillars that later will grow into larger caterpillars. Um, and this little hole here, right there, is something that was basically one of these eggs probably hatched and produced a tiny caterpillar that chewed that little hole. All right, so when you have caterpillars, oftentimes they lay eggs on the underside of the leaves. These are on the top side of the leaves, but typically they're on the underside. And typically they're on the underside because the moth comes around, do-do-do-do-do, flies into your garden, 
And what's available is the underside of the leaves and they're trying to protect and make sure that their eggs are going to hatch into caterpillars. And so they find the most protected space, which is the underside of the leaves. So when you go in your garden and you're looking for uh, some, of these, some of these caterpillars, you can lift and look to see if there's uh, any eggs there. And you gotta look pretty closely. Look how tiny these are, right? So where did that go? Look how tiny that little egg is right there. Can you see the shadow of the egg as I turn the leaf a little bit? Pretty cool, right? Um, again, not so cool, but pretty cool. Nature's cool. Um, so what you wanna do with your caterpillars is you wanna get ahead of the life cycle and there's a couple things you can do. Um, if you have a small garden, you can go out and just look for them and all you have to do is brush that uh, egg off of the leaf and that caterpillar will never find that leaf again because it doesn't have the ability to crawl up the plant. So uh, basically just brushing them off works. Another method that you can do is if your greens are hardy and they're tough, like cabbage heads, they have really tough outer leaves and those cabbage moths, they like to lay eggs on the underside. I take my hose sometimes and I just spray it really hard on the underside uh, and that washes off any of those eggs. Um, but the other thing you can also do is harvest regularly. So if these eggs are being typically uh, laid on the outer layers of leaves, harvest off the outer layer of leaves, rub any you know eggs off or whatever, caterpillars off and eat them, you stay ahead and you actually get to enjoy your greens versus the caterpillars. So oftentimes when I see big caterpillar populations, it's usually because somebody is not harvesting enough. So that's good news. That means you can harvest more if you have a lot of caterpillars. And there are some parts of the world where caterpillars are more present. I get that than others. And some people, everybody's got their own pests to worry about. So you might be in a place where you have a ton of, of, of caterpillars and that might be your one issue. So you just gotta stay ahead of it. Harvesting weekly can help you a lot, all right? And then, at least weekly. I mean, if, you, if you're harvesting every day, even better. Um, okay, that's three things that can be, uh, let's see, yeah, three things that can be eating your greens. The fourth thing that can be eating your greens, another insect, is a cutworm. So if your greens are just leveled near the, near the base of the plant, it looks like the whole thing has just been eaten clean off and all you have is a little stem left in the ground, that's typically a cutworm, all right? So those uh, are, typically less uh, of an issue, but that's how you identify if you have cutworms. Now, the fifth thing that, before I go to the fifth thing, let me mention one thing. So we've been talking about insects, and a lot of people wonder, are ants a problem in my garden? Are they eating my greens? No, typically they're not. Unless you're in a tropical area uh, where there are leaf cutter ants that actually eat the edges, like you can tell that they're leaf cutter ants because they're eating all of the edges of the, the, the leaves, all right? But typically that's in tropical climates. So uh, if you're not in a tropical climate, you don't, you don't have to worry about leaf cutter ants. Ants are typically pretty beneficial in the garden. They pollinate our cucumbers and our squashes for us. Um, and they do a bunch of other stuff. They break down organic matter in our gardens. They can sometimes be an issue if you have aphids. Ants can make aphids worse, but you know. Um, I, if, unless you have aphids as an issue, then you don't have to worry about the ants. Now, I didn't mention aphids. Aphids could be eating your greens. That's another thing that you could, but they're very visible. So just look at your plants and look to see. Um, if you see little bugs, they're most likely aphids. Uh, little insects, little green insects on your greens, those are probably aphids. Sometimes they're gray. There is a cabbage aphid that's particularly strong in the fall months or in the cooler months, and it propagates at the center of the plant, like deep down in the center of the plant, and it breeds really quickly. So those are gray. So if they're gray, they might be cabbage aphids, and if they're green, they're probably just regular aphids. Brush them off, spray them off with water, wipe them off with your hands, rub them off. Um, they have a hard time getting back up on your plants. They're usually not that bad of a pest to have. So here's what I want you to think of for all of these. We're not talking in depth about how to get rid of all of these. Here's what I want you to consider. If you maintain healthy soil and if you maintain a healthy ecosystem, your pests in general will stay in check. And if you, these uh, what I want you to think about is identifying all of this at an early stage because 
the things like this and this only happen overnight when it's an animal. And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. If there are insects that are involved, this is how it starts, these little tiny holes. So just notice at this stage what's happening, identify what your issue is, take some preventative measures to interrupt the life cycle, and you're gonna be fine. Everybody's got some pests in their garden. Everybody has diseases in their garden. It's kind of like being human. Like we all, um, there are sicknesses, there are diseases that are going around, and our immunity system decides how much of an issue it's gonna be. So keep your garden habitat healthy by uh, creating good habitat, good healthy soil. Watch, just observe. So when you start to see things at this size, when it's tiny problem, then you wanna step in and say, okay, what is the pest? And put in place some preventative measures and you'll be just fine, I promise. Uh, you'll figure this out. It's Everybody goes through this when they're first getting started. And what you'll find is that your garden specifically will have a couple of pests to deal with and somebody else will have different pests to deal with, all right? So the last thing that could be eating your greens um, is something like this, is a mammal. And uh, we have tree rats here. So uh, they are ferocious, ferocious. They eat so much kale and collards out of our garden. So what we're doing here is uh, we're putting away our kale and our collards overnight, or we're putting them in a separate location where the tree rats can't get to them, or we're gonna barricade, that, barricade them from the tree rats. Um, or the, the, really thing, the thing that I like to do is I don't like to deal with a lot of barriers in my garden. You can see behind me, I don't have like nettings and fences and like, I don't, I don't want to enclose it. So what I'm doing for my tree rat issue is I'm actually growing a tray worth Check out these beauties. Ah, ah. Um, a tray worth of uh, mustard greens, a variety of mustard greens, because the rats don't like eating the mustard greens, they're too spicy. And I'm also growing a series of like dandelion and radicchio, things that are bitter, because I have some dandelion behind me that the rats are not eating. So I'm going after really spicy and really flavorful greens. Um, and that, that way I'm just avoiding having to deal with the tree rats. That's one of, one of your options always is to not plant the things that are getting eaten in your garden and just get rid of that whole headache, all right? So let's talk about animals for just a moment. So how do you know if it's an animal eating your greens? This is clearly an animal when it happens overnight. If this happened over the course of a couple weeks, a caterpillar could do this kind of damage. But if I walk outside of my garden at night and I look and everything looks good and I come out in the morning and I look and it looks like this, that is an animal, my friend, all right? So what I want you to do is if you are thinking about starting a garden and you're not sure if you have any animals present, things like rats, bunnies, um, deer, those three are very, they eat a lot of greens. Um, if you don't know what kind of animals are present and, you, and there's wildlife nearby, you may wanna plant a little, a couple plants and basically they're sacrificial and you basically are watching to see what comes out of the woods, so to speak. Are deer coming out of the wood? Are rabbits coming out of the wood? Are you know, tree rats coming out of the trees? Whatever the case may be. And if you're seeing those kinds of issues where you're getting things eaten overnight, then you may wanna build some kind of barrier. It might be a psycholo psychological barrier for the animal. It might be a physical barrier for those animals. Um, so if you're somebody who have things like this in their garden and you're not sure what happened, and you're not sure if it happened over the course of a couple weeks or the course of one night, what I want you to do is remove all of the damaged leaves completely off the plant, and then just notice there's no damage, right? Now, wake up the next morning and take a look and see, did leaves that looked like this the night before become leaves that look like this the morning after? You have an animal, my friend, all right? So those are the different things that might be eating your greens. And in another video, we'll talk about more prevention. But the first step is really getting out there and observing what's going on and identifying which pests are present in your area because you can create a habitat that those pests are not thriving. But the first step is observing and knowing which pests that you're dealing with. And like I said earlier, we all get pests in our garden. It happens all the time. And it's just a matter of knowing which ones 
so that we can take the right steps to get the food that we want so that animals and pests are not eating it for us. All right, so you got this. It takes a little bit of time. Uh, it's okay. Ask lots of questions. Post in the comments below. If you, uh, if you have something unidentified uh, that maybe not one of the things that are listed already in this video and you're wondering what's eating your greens, go ahead and give us a description of what's eating your greens. And if you have experience with some of these things that are eating your greens and you want to share your experience for what you did to prevent them from being a problem in the future and you want to share that with others so that they can learn from you, that would be awesome too. All right. So thank you guys for joining me. Love you guys and uh, peace and carrots.